Okay, so we're looking at a new kind of experimental design here called the pair difference experiment. And we're going to talk about a concept called blocking. Before we get to that concept of blocking, I want to compare what we're about to do with what we just did in the videos, right? So we learned the independent t-test in the earlier set here. In the independent t-test, we have two groups usually. And those two groups are independent groups. They're separate. So for example, group one might be males. Group two might be females. Um, it could be group one is math majors, group two are business majors, right? It could be anything like that, but they're independent groups. There's no direct connection between them. For example, you can see here that I've shown that we have a different sample size for group one than we have for group two. That's entirely possible in the independent t-test. Is it possible to have less of one group than another? That's perfectly okay. In the dependent t-test, or the match paired t-test, depending on how um, your book or your professor calls it, they're both the same. The dependent t-test has essentially two sets of data as well. In this case, the classic example I've drawn on the board involves students taking an exam twice. They take it before they do some kind of prep work and then after they've done the prep work, right? Before the prep work, they have this set of scores, after they have this set of scores, and we want to compare the two sets of scores. These are almost like our group one and two, but you'll see a very important thing here. Because each student takes the test twice, there can't be different sample sizes. In other words, there'll be exactly as many before scores as there are after scores. That's one key thing. The other thing is you see there's a dependency between these numbers, right? In other words, they come from the same student. You know, you're not going to see 70 and 100 typically, mainly because what? It's the same student taking the exam. So, you know, the student, even if it goes from 70 to 100, then you would have to see those kind of differences throughout because um, student two, for example, when he takes the exam before and after, again, the score on that exam is going to depend upon student two's ability somewhat, right? So in other words, there's going to be some connection between the two results. If I compared one student to another student, then of course I would have very different test scores possibly, right? Because there's no joining characteristic, right? In this case, the joining piece is that it's all from the same student. And that's true for each pair of numbers, right? They have the dependency that you know the same person is taking the test. Okay. So that's where the dependent part comes in. The other issue that brings up then is this. What are we really interested in knowing? Do I care if, say for example, student four is a worse student than student five? Is that really what I'm interested in when I'm setting out to test a test prep program? Do I want to show that some students are worse than other students in academics? I don't think so. That's not our goal, right? Our goal is to figure out whether my test prep program improves test scores. So I don't really care that student four is not as good as a student as student five. That doesn't matter to me. I know that those differences exist already. I'm not looking to show that. I want to show that my test prep program will improve test scores for students in general, right? So student four gets a boost, student five gets a boost, right? Even though student four is a pretty poor student compared to student five, it doesn't matter. We see that there's an improvement in either case. So that's the main thing. What happens here is we want to ignore those differences then. The differences that you see within these students or within these subjects. The way we're going to ignore them is we're going to block out those differences. We're going to find a way to ignore those differences. That's where the phrase blocking comes in. Blocking means you're going to do some strategy to eliminate the differences you're not interested in. Like, I don't care about the differences among the students, so I'm only going to be interested in the differences between before and after test scores. All right, and this brings us to this little box I wrote here, this within variation versus between variation. If you hear that phrase, within variation refers to the variation that occurs within the subjects, right? So, you know, differences between subject one, two, three, four, five, six, so on and so forth, right? Between any pair of students, there's going to be natural variation. That's the within variation. Between variation refers to the two sets of numbers. So between, as uh, is referring to the differences between the before scores and the after scores. So that's just, um, you know, it sounds like language you can interchangeably use, but in statistics we have a very specific meaning. So within variation is the variation between the students or within the students' scores, and between variation is going to be between the two groups we actually want to study or the two sets of data that we actually want to study. So before scores versus after scores, that variation, those differences, is between variation. Just to make sure you understand what variation is, remember variation it means differences, right? So and we see there's differences between these guys, right? And then we also see there's differences this way. But we're interested in these kinds of differences, right? Not that kind of differences, right? Okay, so either way, that's kind of the idea, and that's the comparison between the two types of things we're going to be working with. What's nice about this before-after setup, and the fact that we have equal sample sizes, and the data usually has to be laid out like that, 
that's really helpful for us to know when we do the problems that, hey, this is a dependent or match paired t-test. And over here, in the independent t-test, we always have those two sets of data. So that's another way to kind of indicate which test you're dealing with, which procedure you're dealing with. Of course, outside of that, if you don't have all this shown to you, but you just have summary information that the problem is provided, then you have to kind of read the description of the problem and see if there is a dependency or whether there is a scenario where the two groups are independent. Unfortunately, that just comes down to critical reading at that point. Okay, so we're going to do in the next video is to kind of break down this dependent t-test and see the strategy for solving, uh, or not solving, but running the hypothesis test or creating the confidence interval that will help us know if there truly is a difference between the before and after story.